thank you jaipur ophthalmological society for giving me the opportunity to present in your webinar uh, my topic is uh, submacular hemorrhage management the we know the principal causes of submacular hemorrhage it's amd pcv macroaneurysm trauma and blood dyskinesis <laughs> the usual prognosis of the submacular hemorrhage is very poor retinal damage can occur as early as within 24 hours because of the barrier effect toxicity of the iron and hemosiderin uh, iron uh, fibrin infiltration sharing of the outer segments and ultimately fibrotic scar formation so windows of opportunity is within first two weeks of onset of submacular hemorrhage all the treatment strategies depends on the two most important factor that is the size of the macular hole number two duration of the hemorrhage so if it is small size less than four dix diameters uh, suppose in this case one to four dix diameter less than two weeks duration so in these cases anti vgf injection if it is uh, from cnvm or it uh, if it is traumatic in origin pneumodisplacement is enough to clear of the hemorrhage and uh, for the improvement of the vision like uh, if it is medium size that is more than 4 dix diameter but not extending beyond the temporal vascular arcuate and the duration is 2 to 4 weeks it is the the question uh, the role of tpa subretinal tpa is coming at the uh, many studies already showed that subretinal tpa versus and uh, versus uh, intravitreal tpa uh, role uh, that is subretinal has a definite more advantages than the intravitreal tpa and this is the uh, this is the ideal situation in this picture you can see the the uh, the height of the uh, hemorrhage is just above the fovea this is the most ideal picture uh, scenario for uh, going for the subretinal TPA injection, massive subcovial, thick uh, uh, hemorrhage subretinal should be just above the macular area and usually the re uh, recombinant uh, TPA uh, we are using as in like, like alt active uh, actilize or uh, it's 20 milligram uh, to be in 20 ml to be dissolved in 20 ml of the, uh, sterile water for injection and take the five, 550 microgram in the 0 0.05 ml that is the dose usual dose you can go up to the 100 microgram but not especially you should avoid the higher doses to prevent systemic toxicity like in this case of submacular sub ilm hemorrhage combination because of macro aneurysms you can see the sub ilm and sub retinal hemorrhage submacular hemorrhage and uh, here i am uh, uh, after doing vitrectomy and pvd induction i uh, stain the ilm with bvg dye and then uh, peeling the ILM with the uh, help of forceps just to release the trapped sub ILM hemorrhage. Then using 41 gauge metallic uh, needle, uh, subretinal needle to uh, inject subretinal TPA and just only subretinal TPA and do fluid exchange and SF6 gas injection. And after three weeks of surgery, you can see beautifully uh, there is no sub ILM hemorrhage, no uh, subretinal hemorrhage retina is absolutely flat and vision is to six by 12 on Snellen's chart. Now, uh, it's a combination of sub neurosensory and sub RP hemorrhage in most of the origin, uh, practice routine practice. Uh, we are seeing this kind of situation, vision is finger counting close to face, we are accurate. And here, uh, the, uh, we are using cocktail of subretinal TPA, anti vgf and ear injection. That is here, after doing vitrectomy and PVD injection, I'm injecting subretinal, sub neurosensory retinal, uh, uh, RTPA. Uh, and you can see the wave of uh, this thing. And again, uh, injecting the uh, sub uh, RPA, PED, uh, TPA, which usually we are not recommending sub uh, PED TPA because uh, to prevent uh, systemic toxicity. Now I'm using combination of anti VHF and AR injection subretinally, and we uh, do fluid exchange with uh, and post operatively you can see the uh, vision improved to six by eighteen and uh, the whole uh, PED and sub neurosense retinal uh, hematitis completely dissolved. Like it's, uh, it's another situation where I'm planning for the uh, subretinal blood reward because the subretinal hemorrhage is quite extensive. Here I'm injecting subretinal TPA and waiting for something. Especially you can wait from 15 minutes to 45 minutes. Here, uh, more you wait, more you get more clot lysis. Now doing small retinotomy, it is uh, good to prevent further PVR formation. Now you can do one or two retinotomy, remove blood as much as possible. Uh, do fluid exchange and followed by uh, laser, then uh, injecting subretinal as uh, intravitreal uh, anti vgf injection followed by oil. And uh, postoperatively, you can see uh, after three weeks, vision improved a little bit, but after silicone removal, we actually vision improved to six by 18 on long term follow up. This is uh, the case of hemorrhage RD, that is the more extensive uh, data. 
detached retina, whole retina is diffused, the hemorrhagic retina, uh, subretina hemorrhage. Uh, in this situation, you have to be very careful regarding the, during the vitrectomy. Like in this situation, you can see the blood is very sticky and it is altered to blood. It is altered color is probably brown in color. And this is, these are the special situation where you can get this kind of discolored hemorrhage. And uh, here, one, in one or two or three quadrant, you can inject uh, the subretin tip, but you should always mind the, uh, the maximum dose of the uh, subretin tip, then go for the uh, temporal retinectomy because the hemorrhage is quite extensive, more than almost total retinal detachment was there. And uh, now uh, you are removing all uh, the blood, then uh, injecting PFC to settle the retina to laser. And uh, uh, finally, uh, you are doing a silicon oil PFCL exchange by uh, using a uh, sandless light, injecting silicon oil with the left hand and removing PFCL with the right hand. <laughs> like postoperatively, you can get very good result in this kind of situation. In this, uh, is a, like after two, uh, 10 months of post op, uh, 10 months post op, post test work, vision improved to 6 by 30 is decently okay. Macula seems to be like uh, quite decent in uh, shape and uh, it starts uh, start functioning. And it's when you are uh, there is uh, you are planning for the uh, RP core duct uh, transplantation because of the long standing hematoma. Already you are given multiple injection of anti vegem Like in this case, I plan for the subretin and tip uh, sub, uh, RP core patch graft transplantation. Autologous uh, from the same patient. Now you have to in, uh, do multiple sites, uh, blob like elevation, and the wave should go up to the uh, over the macular area. Like uh, in this case, where the retina is already elevated, like in this case, we have a detachment. Uh, try to do the uh, retinectomy, uh, peripheral retinectomy as close to the oral serrata as possible and remove the subretinal blood. Now, uh, as uh, because the most of the situation of blood is uh, very much clotted in this situation, I have not used uh, subretinal TPA. You may use subretinal TPA to uh, promote the clot lysis and finally uh, remove all the blood and where the uh, there is a subretinal flesh in neovascular membrane. You can see in the case of PCV, you can see the uh, flesh in neovascular membrane partially scarred. Uh, be careful using Tano scratcher. Also, I'm just gently separating the, the membrane from the detached retina, remove all the uh, membrane membrane part uh, to prevent further hemorrhage. Now, from the bleeding for the feeder vessels to be cauterized uh, gently uh, to prevent further uh, hemorrhage. And now, uh, your, uh, your next step is uh, for doing the RP code at patch graft transplantation from a relatively healthier looking area. Uh, if you cannot do the preoperative autoclusions, uh, you have to be uh, like on table, you have to decide. Inject the PSCL under the beneath the PSCL uh, with the help of forceps. Try to uh, look at the graft over the proposed site of the fovea. Now remove the graft alignment was done. Remove the removal of PSCL was done. And now the uh, now the you are injecting. Uh, we are injecting uh, PSCL to reappose the uh, retina and fi uh, finally doing fluid exchange laser. Uh, followed by silicon oil PF selection, injecting PF silicon oil with the left hand and removing PF cell with the right hand under sandal slide. Now you will get uh, this much of good result after silicon removal also patient gained 6 by 36 patient and you can see the graph gradually the graft edema is uh, decreasing and uh, post operatively. Now I am uh, highlighting one very interesting situation presented, presented with PLPR uh, vision, vitreous hemorrhage and massive subretinal hemorrhage where I plan to inject uh, RTPA 0.05 cc injection, wait for some time, uh, one or two uh, sites of, uh, which I choose in you know, the maximum elevated area. Then again, inject a subretinal anti vegem and filtered air 0.03 cc injection to include exchange and injecting CPF gas. After, the, after uh, uh, that, uh, seen the vision was gradually improved. But again, after 14 weeks, patient presented with a massive recurrent uh, hemorrhage, subretinal hemorrhage. Then I planned for the RP chloride patch graft transplantation uh, along with the removal of the, this uh, subretinal hemorrhage. Then uh, I'm doing the retinectomy, creating giant retinal tear uh, as close to the oral senate as possible, removing the subretinal blood and taking care of the uh, surrounding additions. Uh, very carefully separate the, uh, and remove the scar tissue and injecting PF cell uh, to separate the retinal flap and choosing an area of supratemporal quadrant 
or you can choose the infotemporal cortex if the uh, if the area is uh, RP looking uh, is healthy in that side. With the help of uh, two fourth step under the the PFCL, you are translocating the graft uh, in the into the proper site of the fovea. Now graft alignment was done. Remove the PFCL and again uh, then uh, re, uh, again reinvert the uh, uh, retinal flap by injecting the PFCL again over line over the retina. Uh, and do fluid exchange uh, to reappoint the retina and uh, do do uh, do nicely attached uh, and to laser uh, followed by uh, silicon oil uh, PFCL exchange at the end of surgery. Uh, now uh, posteriorly you get a good result. Vision improved to six by sixty and uh, the graft is nicely attached here uh, sub, sub under the macula. Thank you. Thank you, Boral. Uh, you see, I must say that last two surgeries were very, very daring. A lot of us uh, may not be performing those surgeries regularly. Any comments from anybody, Dr. Hosan, about the last two uh, cases? Um, well, I, I, I'm doing... Um, well, my first comment is how to inject the, um, the TPA and... Um, the anti bgf and the air I, I like to start outside the arcade because i like the wave of the subretinal fluid yeah. to reach the macular area smoothly and gently um, because if it is um, too the pressure is, is high yes. it may create a macular hole macular hole so, yes yeah, yes so i i i like to to start injecting outside the um, the posterior pool outside the arcade so and allow the fluid to uh, move gently toward the macular area this is one point um, for the massive subretinal hemorrhage uh, doing the um, the uh, choroidal graft uh, the choroidal graft uh, technique i don't like to apply many diaphragmia or heavy diaphragmia to the, especially to the retinal periphery, because this area is a vascular. And um, cutting just posterior to the aura uh, will not produce bleeding. If bleeding occurs, then you can touch the bleeder vessel with, uh, with the light diaphragm. But um, there is no need to, um, to apply heavy diaphragm uh, in the area to be cut. And then... Um, the, I, I usually um, uh, outline the area of the choroidal patch with laser and not with the with the, with the laser. So um, uh, because it is less laser is less damaging to the uh, choroid, the um, RPE, and uh, and um, usually I drag it under PFCL as you have shown, and then I usually like to set, to have it well centralized over the macula, uh, over the, um, uh, beneath the macula, I mean. Uh, the other uh, point is that you have to choose a healthy area of RPE and um, That's what choroid. I yes. yes. Um, yeah, you did that. But um, uh, what I, I'm not doing like you is the diaphragmy, uh, the that application is. of, of diaphragmy. I think yeah, there is no need for all this diaphragmy. Uh, this is, in my in my opinion, what I'm doing. Till now, but I did. Uh, yes, I till now I did almost um, more than fifty cases, and two cases I faced macular hole. One patient presented with on table macular hole. I just did uh, only fluid exchange, then the fluid from the macular hole from uh, macular hole, and it was closed postoperatively. But in another case, I didn't realize the macular hole formation, and a patient came with the macular hole with detachment. That is the another situation. Uh, in two cases, I faced macular hole. That's uh, that's why you are telling. It's you have to inject. Yes. We are. Uh, and about, by the way, these holes are difficult to close. Yes. yes. Even if even if the eye lamp is there. So if you try to uh, perform an eye lamp flap, it it will not close easily. And yes. you may need uh, to put a, a retinal graft to close it. So. Um, so one ha one uh, has to be cautious uh, while injecting the subretinal uh, fluid and air. And um, this is my only yes, comment. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The, the one question about the general. 
Simpler Dr. case. Goran. Okay, Dr. Shobit, please. Yeah. Uh, do you like to do a one stage surgery, Subendu, or do you like to do a two stage? Like I inject 25 microgram with air bubble underneath the retina, 25 microgram in the vitreous cavity, do a FGE and come out. And if I need to do a lavage, I go in after three days. Uh, do you like to wait in your operating room and then uh, drain the blood or do you like to do a two-stage procedure? Basically, I am not in favor of intravitreal injection of TPA. I am always uh, well doing no, the no. Along with, along, I, along with, of course, subretinal and the air bubble goes in first. 25. Yes. Subretinal injection, after giving injection, if the blood clot is quite uh, a bit, if I am not draining it, I am just uh, finishing the surgery. Surgery on on that uh, after injecting the PPA, but if you're planning to drain the blood, then I have to wait for at least 15 to 20 minutes. After 15 to 20 minutes, do the retinotomy and you can just uh, suck the blood because total is locked. But that that in those situations you are planning for the draining. But majority of cases, if it is arcade to arcade hematoma for uh, four to six days diameter, roughly you don't need to uh, drain the blood. And if the height of the uh, Submacular hemorrhage is just above the phobia. Even in those situations, the blood will shift go down. And I will ask the patient to uh, remain in the propped up position, propped up position for 12 hours, then followed by prone position to shift the residual submacular blood in the periphery. So if the macular part is cleared, getting cleared, the vision will automatically improve. And remaining part of uh, some retinal hemorrhage that may remain in the inferior part, that will hardly affect the vision. I do surgery on if the blood is only above uh, 1,000 micron at the fovea in a PCV case yes. uh, or in a macroaneurysm case. I don't do it if it is less than 1,000 micron at the fovea. So that is my cutoff point. And Dr. LG and I had a discussion on this. And 